This is where we get into all the latest UFO news going around the world as we speak. And topic number one is a hot button topic with me. And I know John only put it in there to piss me off. Only well, put you know. piss me off. And I know this for a fact because Demi Lovato's new television show, Unidentified, which was on the Peacock Network in the U.S., well, it made its premiere, its debut. And I'm going to tell you, there's not a lot of people in the UFO world who really enjoyed it. Now, did you get to see it? I did not because I'm in Canada and we don't get the Peacock Network. So no, I'm, I'm going off of the reviews that I was reading on Twitter. And I will tell you, a good friend of our show, Michael Huntington, Basically, I'm going to quote him here. This show this show, just put ufology back four steps. Four steps. Thank you, Michael Huntington. <laughs> Michael Huntington was live tweeting during the show last night. Oh, beautiful. I'm so sorry I missed that. I'm so yeah, sorry I missed that. But let's get into it. What do you think, well, John? Well, so here, here's 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 what I where I think it brings up an interesting question, okay? And that is that you know uh, it's now flying all over the place that that Demi Lovato has has um, has has come out in saying that she has met an alien. However, this alien looked nothing like Paul. Uh, you know, most of us are expecting someone maybe of a green or gray tinge, you know, preferably bald, rather short. Um, her alien was a blue orb, um, which doesn't even really have any real life analog. Um, so, but just imagine a, a fuzzy glowing beach ball that floats in the sky. And, uh, and for, from, from her experience, that blue ball, like being within 15 feet of it, that meant that she had come in contact with an alien. And and let me just let me say one thing really quick. I, I I don't have any data to show that she's wrong. Okay. And I have I have several friends that see such things in the sky and around them. And they do also believe that they are part of the phenomenon. So I'll I'll, I'll caveat with that. But what I find interesting is is that um is that we now have enough different aspects of this phenomenon surfacing that uh, when someone says, Hey, I met an alien. We don't all think the same thing anymore. And I think that's a little bit problematic uh, because I think there's a lot of people that are going to go, oh, I get to see Demi Lovato meet Paul. And then and then they, she talks about this floaty blue orb thingy and they are left feeling a little, you know, disenchanted, which like it was what happened to Niels deGrasse Tyson. He, he evidently found himself very skeptical of, uh, of, of Lovato's um, experience. A lot of people see the blue orbs. Yes. They really do. Yes, and, they do. And I'm going to tell you, just from reading what I wrote online, I have not seen the episode. But I'm I'm not going to st uh, step back on my stance on this. The only reason why she has a UFO show is because of her 104 million subscribers on social media. The I think good, it's 115 now, but yes, okay, yeah, it's an insane number. Whatever it is. Yeah. If I could have a tenth of that, I'd be happy. Very happy. If I could have 1% of that, I would be happy. But, you know, I'm not claiming or saying that she's not an experiencer, okay? I don't know her story. But yeah. when I look at the overall picture of everything, is this a good thing for ufology? And as I stated before, I saw the trailer to the show. I thought that the cast of characters, which I believe is her best friend and her sister, you could tell that they are complete amateurs. And they're trying to act like big pro ufologists digging into this seriously. This show, whoever casted this show, made a couple of big mistakes <laughs> that I could see just from the trailer. Number one... I think if they would have had a couple of primetime ufologists, whether you like them or not, doesn't matter, uh, names in the field, whether it's Richard Dolan, whether it's 
Melinda Leslie, whether it's Grant Cameron or whomever. I would have been happy with Grant Cameron. All right. The fact is, it would have brought some direction to the show. And it would bring direction to the show. Number one. Number two, the good news is it's going to bring a lot of new, younger people into ufology. But are they going to get the right lesson from this show? Look, we don't need ufology to turn into what the paranormal ghost hunting has turned into, where everybody and their dog thinks that they can sit there and become a ufologist because there is no educational training on this. Okay, that's what happened with ghost hunting. It's ruined the world. The television shows talk to many longtime ghost hunters. They will tell you the television shows have pretty much ruined ghost hunting. All right. Are we going to see this with Demi Lovato now? Now, granted, we are only only one episode in. But I trust Michael Huntington's word when he said it was bad. Bad day for ufology. There's no experts there. All right. There's nothing that is going to move this field forward. And I feel sorry for Demi because this show will likely be canceled before it even gets off the ground. And it's well, the, yeah, go ahead. L- lucky for her, I believe it is a canned six episode sequence that has already been finished and has already like guaranteed the air. So, um, I, I think that, um, I, I think that, that they'll at least get out those first six episodes. Um, you know, um, I don't know, Dave, I like, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I think a lot of what you're saying is, is actually very sensible. I, I, you know, I think that, um, um, I think there's a lot of risk, um, when, when something like this happens, um, just like when, um, when Rob Lowe did his Bigfoot expedition right now, personally, I don't know Rob Lowe. He, he, he might have actually seen a Bigfoot in his life. I don't know. But because of the spectacle around what he did, because, you know, just the way it played out, um, it, you know, it didn't, it didn't, no, I'm not sure it did a whole lot of harm, but it certainly didn't do a whole lot of good. Um, you know, I think that, um, I think that, you know, I think what it really comes down to is, is that you, you just have to find a few good things in it and just hold on to those, you know? Um, things like the fact that I think it's good that, um, that, uh, orbs are perhaps going to be, uh, discussed in a more, um, real sense. You know, there, a lot of the world still just sees orbs as lens flare, right? They, they, they don't even believe orbs exist at all. Right. And right. orbs are, and I haven't seen one myself, but I've seen photographs. I've seen very impressive photographs. Um, and, uh, and, and orbs are a part of the phenomena, right? It is one orbs are one of the phenomenons within this phenomena, right? And if you want to learn about this, an education in orbs is is kind of part of the you know prerequisites. So I think introducing people to orbs in a way that that is is you know uh, at least believable if you believe the person who's starring in the show. Um, that's, you know, that's probably a good thing. The same thing is going to be said about, um, depending on how she approaches remote viewing, because she gets a remote viewing lesson later in the series. And, um, and depending on how her regression goes, because she receives a regression uh, uh, sequence in the series. So in a way, she's kind of doing like this six episode buffet of the phenomena, you know, like, you know, oh, I'll try this and I'll try that and I'll try this. And oh, this is good. Uh, well, you know, is, is there that. a palate cleanser? Um, and that might introduce, you know, I mean, let's face it, right? If it if it brings in, you know, if it brings in, say, you know, four thousand people that wash out, but it brings in a hundred people that are of good caliber and end up sticking it out and becoming good researchers, eh? You know, I don't know if that's such a bad odds. Okay, now I know Geraldine Orozco who is a regular on this show as has been, you know, I don't know if she's going to appear in the show, but I do know that on her Facebook page yesterday, she wished congratulations to Demi Lovato and, and put up a picture of her and Demi from some conference. I don't know where they would have met, but you know, and this is what Geraldine says. And I trust Geraldine. She goes, 
and I'll read verbatim on her Facebook page. She goes, I resonate so much with Demi's journey through seeking answers and the profound connection we hold through similar experience with the Pallides. Demi is a special, kind, and loving soul. I support your journey, bright soul, and know that you are never alone on the highest level. We are one and hope that everyone can take a moment to check with what that really means. There is no separation between the light and dark. We are all just experiencing life through a spectrum of infinite potential. Now, I'm going to ask Geraldine about this next week when she's on the show. But I have to tell you, you know, it, I think it would have been better. And and the problem is when these big name stars come into ufology or paranormal or any type of show that you know, that they're trying to resurrect their name or they have a mild curiosity. The first thing they do is their publicists literally block them from everything in their way because their publicists are pulling out their hair. Oh my God, my client has gone down the woo train. I've okay. got to protect my investment. <laughs> exactly. Okay. This is why you don't see Sammy Hagar or a lot of these big name stars doing the ufo shows even though there's a ton of experiencers in ufos ghosts sasquatch weird stuff when you're on the road as much as a musician is all right you can tell they're going to experience something it's just the way it is well and maybe you need a couple of demi lovatos to come in it with the bumper rails on with the with the rather unrealistic experience to normalize things in a way so that then the more regular, you know, performance folks that have real experiences and want to take it seriously have a chance to do so. Well, the, the point that I'm saying here, though, buddy, is this. What we need is it, we need somebody like Demi Lovato. She could be a massive, massive endorser of the UFO campaign or the paranormal world. What we need her to do is to actually sit down with proper people and get some schooling in. Go for a she, run. She needs an Obi-Wan. She needs an Obi-Wan. Exactly. And that's what we're not seeing. But let's move on because I don't want to keep uh, biting on this. Back to Joe Mergia on Twitter with his 14,000 pages of tweets uh, that he puts out. And I'll tell you, I love Joe. Uh, he's got a terrible hairdo by the way, that Brillo pad just drives me nuts, but he does good work. And here he was transcribing Lou Elizondo on Tucker Carlson on Fox news. What came out of it? Yeah. I just, let me just say right off the bat, Joe, if you're listening, I, I adore you, man. You are the only person I've met that is verbose in text as I am in voice. Um, so uh, yeah. So the thing was, was it one, it, it's another appearance of, of Louis Elizondo on Tucker Carlson, um, which, you know, is it, a whole different conversation in that, Tucker Carlson is still the only nighttime news host in America that is regularly taking this topic seriously. And the True. fact that it's still just Tucker is a little disturbing, but it is Tucker. And thank you, Tucker, for doing that. Um, and but basically, um, the thing that was nice was that it did give Lou a chance to kind of work on some of his um uh, you know, some of his his like core language when it came to why what's in the uh, armed services bill is so important. And so uh, now a lot of this stuff is um, is stuff that we've all already talked about. Um, you know, the fact that it, it's going to dissolve the existing uh, UAP task force, uh, that it establishes a formal permanent force within uh, within the government. Uh, it it takes it out of um, the um, uh, the undersecretary and puts it into the secretary, uh, the undersecretary of intelligence and puts it into the secretary of defense uh, uh, pool, which is a, a you know, I mean, it, it I know it only looks like one level, but that's a big jump. Um, you know, he talks about the fact that, you know, um, that, you know, for him, this is a long time coming. It should have happened years ago. Um, that there was there was absolute justified need for this years ago. And so he talks about a lot of the the core points that we've all been discussing, but does so in a very polished, very clean, very concise way. and 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 Tucker buys it all. he 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 just he just goes right along with it, believes all of it. Now, I'm not saying he shouldn't, but a lot of people would push back. And you know, Tucker seems to trust Elizondo at this point. and you know, I, I think uh, in a way, you know that that really helps all of us. 
Okay, and and I understand that. But when is Lou going to come out and say something epic? Something that we really, really need? You know, I honestly, Dave, you're going to hate me for saying this, but I hope not for a long time. I think it's because, great. Uh, because in many ways, once he does that, he's pulled the pin out of the grenade. And uh, as soon as he does that, his his ability to um, to have an impact uh, starts going downhill. And um, and so I I look forward to it. I think it'll be something tremendous. I think it'll be something impactful. Um, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, I I, I kind of like having Lou Elizondo around and and uh, I hope he sticks around for a little while longer because, um, you know, uh, there are some bridges that you cross that you can't get back from. Very true. And just so the audience knows, I actually am working on a very big power UFO show coming up in October. I haven't set the date yet. I have to get everything set up, but this is a, this is one that might change some opinions on what is truly going on. Especially I will tip off people especially with Skyfort. And that's a name wow. you're going to hear quite a bit over the next couple of years. Dave, you've been spending too much time on Twitter. You're doing one of these like, you know, carrot things like everyone else. I have doing, to. Man. I have <laughs> to. Okay. No, I'm excited, man. I'm not, I'm, that not sounds saying, great. I'm not saying who's coming on just yet. However, I will say that we are going to have a power show talking about Skyfort, their mission. And Skyfort is talking to no one right now. True. No one. Well, and I'm great. I look forward trying to, to build this up. And I'm trying to build it up and make it happen. So hopefully we be with you. John, be with you. appreciate you, buddy. Another great My night. My pleasure.